Hello and good morning, everyone. Good to see ya. Paul Tranny here. I'm gonna dive into sports. Not really sports. Sports on the laptop. We're gonna dive into Photoshop Masterclass, uh, sort of doing quick collages uh, with a lot of detail. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna move pretty fast, and uh, honestly, I'm just happy to be here, right? Cool. So, good to have you here. Just uh, spent some time on vacation, so I'm all refreshed. And I really don't know what I'm doing. Like, what do I do with my hands now? I have no idea. But uh, good to have you here. Carol, what's up? Jan Eric, Eric Sue, what's up? Steve, Andreas, Cornell. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a good stream today. So, fantastic. Thank you, everybody, who's joining me from elsewhere. Uh, feel free to jump over to Behance.net forward slash Adobe Live, and uh, we can carry on the conversation there. But I just want to wish you a hello. Cool. All right. You guys can see me. Probably sound all right for, uh, for you know, considering my voice and all. All right. Let's dive into this. Uh, let's switch gears. Boom. There we are. Oh, look, some flowers, huh? Don't act surprised, right? Kind of started out some things, right? Uh, but I'm gonna move pretty fast and this is gonna be really fun. I think when it comes to collages, what gets to be really important is your layout. So leading the eye, if you throw a lot of images, right? I have a ton of images in here. If you throw a lot of images at something, uh, your eye isn't gonna know what to focus at. So how can we kind of uh, focus your eye and kind of force you to look at things and have your eye just kind of wander through the image? The best collages allow you to have a focal point and then your eye kind of meanders through the whole piece and you notice like more and more. So that's the idea. Hello, Vincent and Cross. Awesome. Magic fish. Is this a magic fish? I don't know. I'm not hip to all the conversations that have been happening. I've been gone for a couple days, but I'm back now and we'll get this party started. We'll, we could talk about cutting out things really fast, right? So right in here, I want to cut out this lion. Honestly, what I do most of the time and uh, probably sound like a broken record, but I have that layer selected and then I go right over here zoop, to remove the background because this is easiest to do, right? Bam, remove background does the obvious. Let's turn off some of that other stuff. Pardon me. I have a lot of other things that I already cut out because I think that's just gonna help us move faster. So let's just actually turn off some of these uh, images. And there we go, let's turn them up, 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 up. There we are. So here's our lion. Sometimes what happens is it won't get or it might select some of the background. It just depends, but that's your easy button. If there's an easy button in Photoshop, that is it, which is just remove background. From there, I need to refine it. Sure, I could do some cleanup. I could select this. I could fill it with black, right, to get rid of it, right? Anytime your image is larger, when you do any of those selections, you might actually end up with something off to the side, but no, that's actually doing pretty good. All right, so here we are. Uh, if you have Photoshop, uh, Yes, Kathleen, you love the Becky Simpson. Yeah, this is Becky Simpson. That's, I love this shirt. It's like sports. It's like I want to celebrate with you guys, everybody, like everybody who celebrates sports, but I don't really know what I should say. <laughs> I want to get involved in the conversation. I'm, I'm excited that you're excited for this team. Uh, nonetheless, right over here, we'll use Refine Edge. And all I did is double click on that layer mask that launches me into the um, uh, layer. What is it called? masks and uh, layer masks basically interface so i will use the refine edge i'll increase my brush size we'll go in here and just again another magical sort of stuff that we could do we're going in and we're selecting all of that hair and we're making it look nice and smooth so we could always adjust a brush our brush size i typically start from the outside and work our way in it's a little wide okay keep in mind there is a background back there that I need to be aware of because that might pick it up. But I'll kind of jump in, do that. Uh, I could have it create a new layer with a new layer mask if I want to, right? Click OK. I'm gonna do that just to show you like the before and then the after. It's probably pretty subtle, but you'll notice it if we put a background back there. Oh, look at that. Looks very nice. Sports ball, hurry for sports ball. 
<laughs> I, I actually really love sports. I just don't like watching them that much. <laughs> I'm like, give me the summary of the sport. Like, give me the, give me the highlights. Just give me the highlight reel. Huge into sports documentaries for some reason, because I think they're so inspirational. So there we have our lion, and uh, we can move on from there. Okay. Uh, uh, Jan Eric, Adobe Camera Roar, you're funny. You're funny, you got all the puns. What is this? This is also a magical creature, our lovely water buffalo. Right, I'll do the same thing right in here. What do I wanna do? Remove the background, bam. It removes the background for me, okay? So this is a case where, let me turn off some of those splatters, where I, um, I don't, I could probably refine this edge. I could do a lot of things really fast, but um, I really want to, um, and some of this will actually just get lost, so it doesn't even really matter, to be honest with you. But um, I actually want to, uh, let me just it. Let's just click OK. Um, I want to keep this layer mask, OK? Because I might want to go in and change it, right? Or I might have missed something. So here's how you apply two layer masks to one layer. This is what I do. You want a finer level of control, right? So what I will do is I will convert this to a smart object, bam. Now that it's converted to a smart object, I get to apply another layer mask to it, right? So that's what I'll do right here, bam. Clicking right there, there's our new layer mask. Hit B for brush, right? And now we can kind of fade that out like so. Uh, Hamza, hello there. <laughs> Mia, you like the last two minutes because you don't care what anybody says. <laughs> that's that's really the only time that really matters. Uh, highly recommend The Last Dance, uh, the Michael Jordan, um, what would you call it, Docu, docu-series. So this is why I do that. Since I have this since I have the initial layer mask protected, I can't remove from that layer mask, which is awesome. Because now I can actually add two, like right in here, I actually kind of want to add to it right there. I can add two without it adding to the background. It doesn't bring back the background, it just kind of adds to that current uh, layer mask. So that's all I'm doing there, right? That's what I'll do with most of these. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. That's funny. Mia used to wear her hair like that water buffalo in high school. <laughs> ah, funniest comment I've heard today. All right, so that's all we'll do. We'll go in here, make it easy. Make it easy, bam, remove background, done. Guess what? Make it a smart object, because I'm gonna wanna move this around, put it into place like so. What about this bird? Hey, guess what? I realize most of that color there is gonna be white, so I can try select color range, right? Select. That's kind of doing something kind of weird, um, but there I can select the color range and grab more or less. That's what I want. Increase that fuzziness, click OK. It selected it, right? Selected all that white, but it also got the white in the face. So anytime you do, do something based on the color, you're probably gonna go and have to do a little bit of cleanup in this case. Hold down the Option key just to remove this inside spot. Happens all the time, it is fine, right? So uh, with that done, let's invert it. Oh, let's not invert that. Uh, no, cancel. Shift Command I, there we go. Shift Command I inverts that selection. Now I just have the bird selected. So now right down here, and there's a number of ways to do that. I could have done it a different way, but click right there and there's our bird isolated, right? We could always clean that up some more, but what do I do? Make it a smart object using a shortcut key, scale it down uh, 30%, right? Make it small, put it over here, flip it horizontally, bam, let's get well on our way to making our collage, okay? I can't figure out the option. Okay, so here's the here's the deal, Camilla. Uh, you can't, you don't have the removed background. This is why that happens. And let me go to um, a layer wh where I wanna do that. Here's, this is why this works. And check this out. So it's like, hey, I'll try to do it to this wolf, 
Okay, I'll go in my properties panel. Oh, it's not there. It's because this is a smart object. Or in some cases, you ready for this? Let's just open up a new image. This is, I'm so glad you asked that by the way, because you will run into this. Uh, let's go to my animals, let's grab. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's awesome. Come on, tell me rhinos aren't cool. Rhinos are awesome. You'll go up here as well for this JPEG and you won't see it over here, but you'll see all the properties for this document. It's because it's a locked layer. So be mindful, it needs to be a pixel-based layer and it needs to be unlocked. And then as we scroll up, oh, there it is. Imagine that. Remove background, convert it to a smart object, drag it into your new file. Close that first one. We don't need it. We have what we need, which is this lovely rhino. Uh, what's the feathering on that selection? Ah, I wish I knew it. We're going so fast. Uh, uh, but yeah, I don't know about the feathering. Um, in general, if there is any sort of fe oh, the feathering probably for the the selecting the colors. Consider it like you're using your magic wand. It's gonna be your tolerance. That's what that feathering is. It's your uh, tolerance, right? Command T. <clears throat> Paul, you're a zoo, 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 zoo talented. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but thank you. I just, I just know where the buttons and switches are. It's not, not that big of a deal. And this is a master class. That's why I have all the pros in this <laughs> in chat, right? Uh, so again, the same thing here. I, this is all I do because it does two things at once. It does the selection, makes the mask, makes my life easy. Anytime I have a, anytime I have a halo right here, I'll just double click on that layer. And again, it's the same process. It's not hard. Like life does not have to be hard. Sometimes if your graphics card, I think I kind of have an issue with my graphics card because sometimes uh, the feathering might not show up or you might just have some issues with it. I've noticed that just FYI, it might be your graphics card if you ever have issues with uh, what you select within this interface, okay? Uh, in this case, if I wanna shift the edge or choke it a little bit, I can shift it inwards. Uh, we also have the option to feather, another number of options there, but we'll go ahead and create that new layer with layer mask. Because it still looks like there's some feathering in there. So again, we can always go in, let's shift that edge. I only need, by the way, I only need, um, the, let's get rid of those, uh, his, make a new smart object, new layer, because I just need his head, right? So that's when I will just slightly remove, like so, we'll do something like that. Cool. Good evening, Idea Creations. Is that your, is that your real name? Is that what's on your birth certificate? Is it, is it really? I want to know you, Idea Creations. I don't want to know Idea Creations. I want to know who Idea Creations really is. What keeps you up at night, man? All right. So we have that. We have our glorious lion. Which looks great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lion. Smart object, done. B for brush. All right, let's get to combining all of our animals. Let's see what we have here. We have our lion. He's gonna be like front and center, okay? So here's our lion front and center. I'm not sure if I actually want this lion. I actually think I have a couple others. Let's take a look. Sweet rhino. We have an elephant. We have a zebra, right? So we have a number of animals that we could work with. Uh, the issue with a lot of these is that um, the coloring is all gonna be off, okay? Uh, so, the so notice how some are black and white, right? This one's black and white. This one obviously has uh, sort of earth tone tints. We have this um, right here, we have this sort of uh, green, it's actually like a blue reflection, right? So it's all gonna be all over the map. That's when we'll get into adjustment layers um, after we start combining some of these. There's a fun gazelle. How about some hawks, right? 
So again, I'm skipping ahead slightly because you've already seen me sort of cut out the water buffalo and make this collage like so. But let's start to bring this together, shall we? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Zebra. I just, man, doesn't, uh, doesn't nature just amaze you? It's just amazing that we have all these awesome animals, you know? Zebra, stripes, you know, living in the plains in Africa, right? Um, and yet they blend in. I don't know. I think it's cool. So, all right. Key thing here is we got to make sure the lighting. Oh, what did I just do? Let's make sure that is correct. No, it's not correct. Let's, let's see. Let's undo that. Okay, so here's my issue, by the way. I have this zebra. I don't really need the back end. I did not convert it to a smart object. I encourage you anytime you're doing uh, things a number of times, make sure you establish shortcuts. I have a shortcut for smart objects, so we can see it right here. I use it all the time. I mash a bunch of keys together and I hit S for smart object. Now I can add my layer mask. That was my problem. That was a close one. It just allows me to keep the resolution of all of these lovely photos. Uh, are those stock photos or did I photograph them? I did not photograph them. I was lucky enough to actually go to South Africa and to go to a wild game preserve. So went to uh, the Kruger National Park. Sabi Sabi to be specific. With Jason and Terry, ah, like 10 years ago. It's a long time ago, but it was so much fun. Right, this is what I'm gonna do now, right? Look at how bright this shark is. Like it is blue because it is in water. I'm gonna do a command U. Watch what happens when I do a command U because I wanna remove some saturation. So command U, ready? Watch this layer, this shark layer. Boop. It applies this as an adjustment layer that it actually opens it up, but it applies it as that adjustment layer. And then I could take that the saturation down if I want to, right? Uh, but mainly I'm just showing you how it nests it in here. It's not gonna be a layer on top, but it nests it within that smart object, which I think is really fancy. All right, <laughs> Joel, that would make one heck of a Walmart t-shirt. Good comment, I love it. <laughs> uh, So keep in mind when we do a, uh, when we make things smart objects, they're a separate file. I'll double click. Here's my lovely separate file for the shark. Because honestly, what I probably want to do with this shark is like shift the edge inward. Let's just play with some of these settings. I don't think my I, th I think I basically have a video card issue, right? Basically, I shifted in the edge, so I don't have that weird halo, and he looks much better. Okay. Uh, let's go Command B. I don't want color balance, but if I did a color balance, right? So here I have the ability to adjust that color, maybe make it a little bit more gold. Click OK. What happens to it as well? Now we have color balance and hue and saturation within that lovely little object, and everything's looking good. Okay, let's move on. Let's get a different. Mm. Wait for it, people. We're gonna make one heck of a Walmart t-shirt. Uh, we have fun shapes that we could add. You know, if we wanna make it look really cool, we would add a custom shape. I'll just use, um, make it hipster and use a triangle. Oops. Have a triangle selected from my custom shapes. Zoop. Could draw that out. And now it's, oh, you got a triangle there. It's so hipster now. Right, so uh, for some reason, so I joke about adding a triangle because it just makes it like any other silly hipster image out there. But um, you do need an element behind a collage to ground it. So otherwise everything's just like floating around all crazy. You need to ground it somehow. And that's the purpose of this triangle. Could be a triangle, circle, square, doesn't matter as long as you kind of have this grounded. Now I can kind of have the animals coming out of it. So, uh, you didn't get the Walmart reference. Basically, there's a lot of cheesy shirts at Walmart. 
You know, there's like, there's hunting shirts. There's probably the three wolves all howling, which would be awesome, right? It's kind of reminiscent of that, but we'll make it much cooler, by the way. There's our wolf howling. There we are. We'll bring it down there, make it a little larger, like so. Let's make sure we have this little gazelle jumping away, zip, like that. Shrinking it down, I love it, since all of these are smart objects. Um, I don't have any loss of quality, really, for, for these. But again, I'm just kind of working on positioning all of this content. And this gets, this is gonna take some time. It just is. Like for one, do I want two prehistoric animals right next to each other that are the same tone, right? And they're, that's kind of not working. They're just gonna be fighting the whole time. I just don't know if that really works. I'm, I'm torn on it, right? It's, it's not bad. One thing we do know is it does need to go up above the zebra. So we'll kind of work with the stacking order. This line, of course, is really bright. Let's scale it up like that. And the thing that's the most distracting right now is the fact that this lion uh, is gold, unlike everything else. So we'll do the same thing, Command U, we can take down the saturation if we want to. But this is gonna have a more graphic look than that, just so you know. Oh, you like the gradient. By the way, the gradients, if you know me, I'm always picking random gradients. Uh, they're in this gradients panel, right? All I did is have a background. Uh, you could create a new layer, by the way, and then just bam, 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 bam. Just start to pick anyone that you want. All of these are available to you. I just dropped them all in one folder. I kind of like this one. But I think you're right. I think this like green to peach, this mint green to peach is like a nice, a nice color. So those are kind of the two I'm looking at. Okay, cool. All right, let's add, where's our parrot? There's our parrot. There you go. Looking good. So far, we have our shark down here. Uh, we could all, always locate this layer rather than navigating it to it in our layers panel right over here. If we hold down the command key, click, it'll locate and select that layer because I need to blur, or excuse me, remove some of that down at the bottom. Same thing for this um, good old wolf. Right down here, let's just remove a little bit of that. There we go. We could add some more animals to this. Uh, oh, go to walmart.com and search for shirts. Ah, uh, that's probably everything. All right. Yeah, it's crazy. You know what, there's a lot of crazy things out there. We get it. Okay, so let's work a little bit on color, shall we? Since everybody's kind of interested in the gradients. I have the colors all over the map, right? I'm adding all of these different animals that have all these different tones. Let me move myself down a little bit. There we go. And honestly, what I wanna do for all of these animals, first off, I could go to the parrot, for instance, and I can add an adjustment layer. I can do black and white. It adds it to everything underneath. So, so there goes our gradient. Yeah, good job, Paul, why'd you do that? We just need to clip it. So create clipping mask. Otherwise, hold down the Option key or Alt key if you're on a PC. Clip it just to that bird. So let me zoom back out. Clipping mask, bam. Now it just affects that one bird. Yeah. <laughs> I look, Kathleen, of course, Kathleen, you're correct. Vintage graphic tees are the best graphic tees and sustainable. Good point. Uh, totally, totally into it. All right, I'm into it. I'm into your style, Kathleen. I get it. Love it. So, thrifted. So let me kind of adjust because notice how it really washed out this uh, parrot right over here. It really washed it out. But luckily, this is a black and white adjustment layer. I could take the, the yellows and crank them up, but more importantly, it looks like I wanna create, increase the cyan, so it looks like light is still kind of 
bouncing more on the top than underneath, right? So I'm just playing with all these controls. You'll probably do it blindly, you know? That's all I would do is like come in here, adjust it like so, right? Try to get it dialed in uh, to where uh, I like it, okay? That's just for that bird, right? We could do this globally if we want to as well. Let's actually do that. Let's say, hey, you know what? I need to make everything um, uh, sort of like gray. I wanna make everything look graphic and then I wanna add pops of color is the plan. So I can take this black and white layer, drag it up above the animals layer, right? It's above everything. And now I can, for this adjustment layer, I can clip it to just the animals so it doesn't affect the background. Bam, there we go. Now it affects everything. This is more along the lines of what I want, right? So now I could play with all of these settings. Zoop, zoop, zoop. All right, I bet you this yellow affects the lion. I knew it would a lot, but we can kind of crank that up. Key thing is I want to add some contrast. Right? I want to add some cool contrast that'll just be nice. So brightness and contrast, adjustment layer, bam. There it is. Crop it out. Crank up the contrast like so. Right? That's, that's kind of what I'm going for. I don't know. It's, it all needs a little bit of help. We're losing some detail. There happens to be a hole right here. Did you guys see that hole? Right? That I kind of need to work on. Okay. Add some hollow textures, maybe? What are hollow textures? <sighs> Sig Brown, Summer Camp 2020, no, no activities, no people. But I think this is looking better. Okay, so again, there's a thousand different ways we can kind of work on this. We need to create some depth. We need to create a lot of depth with this. It's all kind of one tone, right? So that's kind of the problem that I have with these. Like, I'm like I kind of like this. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what you mean by holographic. Help me out here. I mean, I think a sort of a, a, a multitude of colors. We could try that, by the way. Let's turn off this black and white. Uh, let's go down here. Let's try a couple things. We could try uh, curves. So this is how some people would do this. They would use curves, right? They would make sure curves are clipped like that. And then they'd start to play with, and they would have the, uh, the curve look kind of like, more like a hill where it goes up and down and up and down, right? That starts to give you like what I've seen uh, or at least one way to do like a holographic type look. Obviously I'm not achieving it here because everything needs to be tied. Uh, oh, hologra hologradient. So holographic is in the color, the pastels, just like the background. <sniffs> Got it, okay? But this is one way to have those, make something look like metallic is to go through and start to adjust these. This isn't doing it any favors. I'm gonna get rid of that. In fact, since while we're here, we'll go ahead and do a color lookup. And this color lookup, it's kind of nice because I can go over here and say, hey, you know what? My favorite one is the two strip look. Two strips, just two colors. Guess what? Teal and pink-ish, right? And there's our teal and pink. Obviously, we'd wanna tie that into the background, so we'd wanna shift these colors. Right, so if I did go with this look, I would probably use this background. So here's an entirely different uh, look that we can go with. Cool. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. So many different ways we can go with this. So many different ways. I do know for this lion, still needs to be less saturated. All right, so here's one potentially good look. Um, so I'm gonna save this file, because I think it's actually looking pretty good right now. We could always do derivatives of it. You use drop blues, yep. Yeah. The nice thing about um, 
uh, the color lookup tables is it will uh, tie all the colors together. So it's, it just applies one color look to everything. So it hides all these sins potentially is what I usually like to say. Okay. All right, so let's play with this some more. I still think there's there's a thousand things we can do. Okay. Some okay, Davika says some text should be there. Hey, that's that's a good thought. Let's do it. Throw some text in here. Wait for it. Something like that. Sure, we will try anything once. Uh, so the reason I went with this very fat, very bold font, we'll do kingdom, animal kingdom. Command T, hold down the option key, we'll constrain it. Uh, allowing me to actually scale it up from the center. We'll move that down. Take both of these. Hmm. Hold, please. Change that, change that back to black. <sighs> hmm. All right. Can you tell I'm like struggling with this? I got really quiet. <sighs> All right. How are we doing? Let's turn off this color lookup. Let's turn back on the black and white. Let's turn off that and we're back to something like this. All right. Okay, wait for it. Let's go in here. Oh, nice to know that my caps look a there we go. There we go. All right, let's try this. Changing this to a script font. We need something really fun here. Okay. We don't have it right now. I really like the black and white. I think there's some things we can do with this, right? Let's jump out and find some fonts. Oops. Let's get rid of this stuff. Top secret documents. Uh, fonts. Fonts in use. Ah, fonts in use is a great site. But I want to go to fonts.adobe.com. And in here, let's go to animal. There we go. Ooh, I like it. Let's turn on sweet fancy. We're going to see what that looks like. Let's go back. It's all part of the process, finding the right font right now. 
I'm just viewing calligraphic and we want script. All right, we need something fun like this one, right? Uh, yes, you did. Did you spy a flower layer in there? Yes, I did. I actually started out with it. Um, Cause again, that was just like another way to add color. So let me, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, Mans and then sweet something or other. The hardest thing about web fonts is like, or at least syncing the fonts is figuring out the names of the ones that you have selected, but it should actually give you the recently added. So keep that in mind. I like adorn smooth. Oh yeah. What else? Open to suggestions. Uh, I love fonts with a lot of um, alternate glyphs. That is one thing actually you're not able to search on is like the number of alternate glyphs because I think that would come in pretty handy. All right, let's go with this one. Olydia, there we go, we got it. This is all about creating collage, but hey, with that collage, we needed some text. Let's jump back. Uh, are all fonts free with Adobe Creative Cloud? Yes, they are. Um, so there's like 14,000 fonts. Like it's, the number's always varying. Um, I forget how many you can have activated at any one time. And I'm sorry, I don't, I don't remember. But uh, if you haven't, what actually is nice is sometimes if you haven't used a font in a while, it will like deactivate it for you because there are some fonts that I just don't usually use and I'm glad it just automatically uh, finds those fonts and takes care of it for me. Okay, so right in here, uh, we will do all classes and show favorites, show similar fonts. And I apologize. Uh, all the ones that I added were uh, decorative. Or actually, they were script fonts. Either way. I have something kind of weird going on and I can't quite figure out. Uh, let's take a look. Olydia, let's make sure this is added. If you ever have issues with syncing your fonts, just make sure it's active, go right up here. Make sure you're logged in. This should be the same account as your desktop. So uh, make sure you're using the same Adobe ID. Sure enough, it's the same icon. We're good to go there. Okay, that being said, Olydia, let's type in O-L-I. And I got something weird happening now. But that's okay. Lydia, be my friend. Activate those fonts. Lydia Pro. All right, so uh, I have that done. I don't know why it's actually not showing up. We're not going to worry about it. Um, I'm just going to have to select something in the meantime. Yeah, this is very interesting. We'll go with, we're just gonna go with Snell for now. Does that work? Okay. Okay, it might be 100. Joel thinks it might be 100. Again, we can, we can kind of Google that and figure it out. Uh, but they should all show up. Ooh, there's a Dorn. Ooh, that's, that's one, that's a fun one. There we go. So we have a Dorn, boom, done. Guess what, it's running into his nose. You gotta be kidding me, you can't be doing that. That looks ridiculous. Let's move that over, right, and work on the placement of that. Um, all this is getting a little lost. And this is where we need to start playing with this content. The devil's in the details, right? 
Let's see what other animals I have. And I need to make sure that they're all turned on. Okay. checking the time I have oh geez I only have 15 minutes let's get this party started let's move this up just basically I'm finding a place for it but also what I love to do if you're creating collage is like having fun with the depth of all of this right so I have animal right here uh, ultimately I would love for this to be uh, the this water buffalo to be in front of the text so let's move that down check that out there take this lion down like so B, water buffalo, kind of remove that part like so. There we go. Okay, so that works out. Animal Kingdom for now. Still need to work on a lot of this, right? We could have water. We could do some fun things with that text. Again, it's all about playing with this. Uh, here I could take mountains, for instance. I have these lovely mountains down in the background. I can kind of clip those to the dom right there. We can do something kind of like that. Maybe flip it vertically, like so. Is that, is that doing us any favors? Probably not, but it was worth a try. Don't you think? Right, maybe even for this background, let's change this. Nope, not doing it any favors. Uh, I could swap the wolf for one of the zebras. Let's actually move one of the zebras up. that and again I'm, I'm kind of struggling with some of this to be honest with you I don't even know if this text is quite working right we're losing some of it I don't know if this is the right text let's do something fun I think this will be kind of neat I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking out loud I'm gonna jump into Illustrator right because we really need to modify this text a lot I don't like how it's a how it is basically a bar of text, this blob, and then a bar of text, and this little text. Like, it needs to be more unified. So I wanna be able to stretch out the K and the G and the D and the O and the M, have it all flow together, right? It's gonna be best if I have all those vector points. So let's go to this text, happens to be this acumen variable concept, 104 ultra black, right? So we'll play with this in Illustrator. This is gonna be really fun, again, um, I know this is a Photoshop masterclass. Honestly, if you wanna be good as a designer, you're gonna to need to know all the tools. <laughs> right, there we are. There's that text. I love it when you paste it in, by the way. Let's just do this really fast. You actually, um, it keeps the uh, font and everything. So here we have King Joop, D-O-M. Work with me, people. There we are. Here's my text. I want to run those two together. What do we do? We will just go ahead and create outlines and maybe ungroup, right? Big thing is we're going to grab some of these, and I'm not even sure if this is the right font as I take a look at it. Usually the more like uh, vertical and the more like angular, it's gonna be easier to run these in, one into the next. But let me get this party started because there is not much time. Boom, boom, take this K, right? We could take this part. We wanna take not the whole thing and stretch it out. We just wanna take parts like this part right here. We're gonna stretch down, right? Same thing for this portion right in here. We'll take that, oops, undo. Oh, it does not like that. Not to worry. Whew. Math is easy, design is hard. As Jeff Veen has once said, I agree with him. 
You know what? Math is easy. Design is tough. Math has very straightforward answers. Design is like, meh, does this work? Does this not work? Right in here, hit P for pen, Pada. add some points right in there because this is this middle part that I want to stretch out. You guys catching a vision, vision for what I'm doing, hopefully? There we are. Let's grab both of those. Now I'm just getting lazy. <laughs> I'm just going to need this level of control for this text. Take both of these. Same controls as in Photoshop, constraining, using that Alt key to draw from the center, something like that. Sorry, I don't mean to ignore chat, but this is the format I'm going for. So this is what we'll deal with. We'll take this, we're gonna copy it. This G gets a little funny right up here. Why didn't you guys say something? Uh, Yes, Illustrator honestly is the best font editor. All right, that's why I've jumped into it. Just bring that down. The cool thing is we can modify this later on. So we'll copy this. We'll go into Photoshop, get rid of that text, paste it in as a smart object, right there. Okay, done. Bam, there it is. Stretch it out. This is, this is, I feel like this is better. All right, so I have that, I can double click on it. It's gonna obviously jump back into our file. Always bothers me. Fit artwork to bounds, that's what I wanna do. Let's select this, let's change this to white, right? I could always change this, I can put an overlay of white on top of it, but uh, I just went out to the original file and changed it. Okay, so this almost changes so much, because now we could really, integrate this these um, various animals with this text. This is going to be really fun because it's like a puzzle. Okay, so you take this. Here we have this rhino. Let's do one of those. Hold down the Alt key, click. There we have like so. So we could really start to integrate this in with the text if we decide that we want to, and I think we do. Make this a little larger. <sighs> Work with me, people. How is everyone doing? Huh? You guys get like kind of capturing a vision for what I'm doing here? We're gonna add more animals to this as well. Let's delete this layer mask. We're gonna have this wolf stand right there. So we'll just kind of remove this back half like so. Okay, we have this. And again, we're just having fun. This could kind of come from the inside of the O for Dom. Holding down the command key. Shoop. Let's make this one even bigger. He'll kind of come from the inside of that D. Okay, ready for this? Command click. I've now selected all of that text. I'll go back to my zebra. Here's my zebra. I'll add that layer mask. 
and it puts them inside of that lovely text. All right, I got five minutes to make this happen. I gotta hurry. I really just needed that one arch. Fill with background color, boom. All right, so how are we doing? Flip the shark, cool, good idea, right? So we do need to fill that area. Good call, Command T. I usually do a Command T and then if you do a right click, you'll get that option for pretty much all of the Tran the whole transform menu is at your fingertips is if you do a command T. So then you just flip. Oops. Not vertical. Horizontal, like so. Good call. Right? I don't know that. Oh, don't you start with me, Siri. Oh, don't you start with me, mouse. My uh, connection lost. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on back. There we go. And we're back in action. What's going to be really fun with this is as we start adding um, like shadows and different things as well. Uh, flip the shark. That's right. So this is going to be really fun. I have this shark here. I got this guy. I got all these different animals sort of painting inside of them. I'll work out this word a little later because it just needs help. So we'll just move that to the top. How is everybody doing today? Yeah, I probably need new batteries. Problem with my mouse, I don't know why it doesn't show me the uh, battery size. So, um, if you hit B for brush, we know we can change the size using your uh, bracket keys. But then, let's go right up here. So I'm changing the size, hopefully, of my B for brush. Wait for it. Ugh. There we go. Zoom up here. Da 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 da. Right? Ugh, dang it, I'm so sorry. Keep on clicking the wrong option right up here. Hold down the shift key and then it changes the hardness. Right? So that's what I'll typically do. I'll do the shift key and uh, open close bracket. And then just the open and close bracket will increase or decrease the size. Because what I want to do is come down here, zoop, chop that off like that. Right, this guy's gonna be coming out of there. You get the idea. So much more I need to do. Let's just grab, just for the sake of it. Yeah, let's grab these mountains. Why not? Let's drop them in there, like that. I don't know. We have two different versions we're making. Um, cool. <laughs> All right, so uh, lots of shadows need to take place. There's lots of blending that still needs to take place. Honestly, what's helping me out the most is that I'm able to see on my output monitor and Wirecast, I'm able to see this smaller. So it's like, if anything ever isn't looking right, take a step back, like take a break, but mostly just kind of take a step back shrink it down and just see how it looks and see, you'll start to notice all these weird spaces and weird gaps that I need to take care of for this one. But we'll just go ahead and save this as number two. I only have about a more, one more minute uh, before we have the awesome Jason Levine up next. So again, right in here, I would uh, sort of add some more brightness and contrast to do a number of things. That's being saved. Let's take a look at our final three. Here's one. One and two may, might be very similar. Just opening it up now and uh, all that good stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there's one, wait for it. Number two and then number three. 
There we go. So again, this is kind of one I ended up with, but we can see all three of them here as well. So thanks for hanging out with me. Um, you will see the final one that I post later to Instagram. Uh, you'll see the one that I've ended up with. It's gonna be one of these two, by the way. Uh, but hopefully it kind of gives you an idea of what you can do in awesome Photoshop when it comes to collages. Doesn't have to be animals, could be anything. Thanks so much, everybody. I'm going to leave you in the very capable hands of Jason as we learn how to do uh, 360 VR video. Guy's blowing my mind already. Uh, but thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate you. Uh, please be safe out there. Wash your hands. Be kind to one another. Wear your, wear your mask. It's not that hard. And uh, let's stay in touch. I'm so happy I'm back, and I'm happy to see you, everyone. Uh, so Jason's up next. Thanks, everybody. Here's the backstage cam.